With me is Pablo Navarrete, co-editor of Alborada magazine and a documentary filmmaker who has worked on that border area. Nice to see you. Thank you. The word that Katie keeps using in that report is desperate. Tell us what you've seen and experienced when you've been in those border areas. I mean, I went to Cucuta a while back now and things in Venezuela have changed significantly since then. They've become sort of much harsher, I think, for the population. Um, I think there's a few points, I haven't seen the report, but there's a few points to say the border is very porous. So there's always been a lot of uh, transit from Venezuela to Cucuta, from Venezuelans to Cucuta. Many work in Cucuta and live in Venezuela, for example. It's a very porous border. So uh, undoubtedly the current economic and political and institutional crisis in Venezuela is, uh, has meant that many Venezuelans are looking to leave the country. Um, but the, the, the reasons are complex. So, for example, I was reading a report from the Universidad de Rosario that said that, migrate, that Venezuelans to Colombia had averaged um, just under 50,000 from 2011 to 2015, and now it's about 80,000. So a significant rise, but not the millions, perhaps, that some of the, sometimes we hear about. But Pablo, Colombia has its own problems. Absolutely. How do locals there feel about this influx of Venezuelans crossing the border? Yeah, there's been... Um, kind of animosity at various levels, at the governmental level between Hugo Chavez and Alvaro Uribe who had um, mainly I guess hostile relations but there was a period where these uh, cooled down and that affected how the two countries often related to each other because when the two presidents were at war with each other um, there was obviously and you know that kind of fed into the general population. Um, we, we, we have to remember that four million Colombians have fled Colombia, the civil war and gone to, Col and gone to Venezuela. I've made films uh, in the barrios of, of uh, Caracas, which are all basically Colombians. Colombian flags are in Petare, the biggest barrio in Latin America. is predominantly Colombian. Colombians who have fled the most barbaric political persecution. So, you know, it, it goes both ways, but four million Colombians have fled um, uh, Colombia and have gone to, to Venezuela. As a documentary filmmaker, what are the stories that we're not telling, do you think, in the media about what is happening in Venezuela? Because it's a story that we're covering on a daily basis almost, but are we missing things? I think, I think there is a, a kind of, there is a sort of two-dimensional nature to what much of the mainstream reporting on Venezuela. There is an undoubtedly uh, a severe economic political crisis. The drivers of that crisis are much more complex perhaps than we uh, we, uh, uh, that are reported on. There are economic uh, inadequacies uh, by the government, undoubtedly, but there are also massive political drivers as the role of the US, the recent sanctions by Trump, but backdating to the coup that the US enacted in 2001 against Chavez and the sy systematic hostility and attempts to overthrow the government. So it's a much more complex story. So the crisis has political drivers, economic drivers. There's also a story of starvation amongst Colombians that we've hardly ever hear about, you know, um, 5,000 Colombians died of malnutrition, preventable diseases, or thirst in La Guajira from the Wayu indigenous community. This was never covered. And so we have to ask ourselves, why are we only hearing when Venezuelans uh, suffer from hunger and not when Colombians do? Important question. Thank you very much for joining us, Thank Pablo. You. Thank you.